Hi everyone, welcome to my video where today I want to talk to you all about what it looks like for me in remote learning and what it's going to look like for me in a couple of weeks for hybrid learning. Right now I have been remote since the start of the school year and it's been going pretty well, I mean as well as it possibly could be. Things are definitely a challenge. I know everyone is experiencing challenges whether it's um, emotional, physical, technology related, anything like that. And it's been really difficult to get a handle on how to make the most out of my remote lear learning experience, but I think I finally have it down. And in the process that I do my 70 minute block period where I have my students with me online, um, I've been able to break it apart into different categories, different things throughout the 70 minutes. And I'm going to really have to just kind of keep that same 70 minute block going for when I go hybrid. A lot of you are already in hybrid mode and you've already learned all of the ins and outs as to how to make it successful or you're still learning about how to make it successful. So I can only hope that what I'm doing here for remote is going to transition pretty well into my hybrid learning experience where I'm going to have one to 12 kids with me live at any given day and the rest of them are going to be home uh, like we are all remote right now. So I wanted to share with you how I break apart my 70 minute period. So right now I teach algebra one and geometry and in that block we have 70 minutes which I have to consider being two periods put together. So I usually would have had a 41 minute period with my students every day in a normal setting like last year. But now in this 70 minute block, things are a little crammed, but I'm definitely trying my best to make it happen. And using my Quizlet study sets has been a lifesaver, not only because number one, I have all of my algebra study sets made for the entire school year. So I didn't have to really start creating anything brand new. Although I do have a lot of geometry study sets that I need to make throughout the year. So I'm half good with my algebra sets and the other half I'm still working on. And you as a Quizlet user are more than welcome to use any of my algebra one or geometry Quizlet study sets that you're going to be able to see on my account, Yak Above Math. So first of all, this is my Quizlet page. It's Yak Above Math. Again, you are more than welcome to go over to quizlet.com backslash Yak Above Math and access any of these study sets. My account is completely public, and so you have access to everything. So let's say for whatever reason, I was doing um, a lesson and I have all of my chapter study sets ready to go for the year, all of my quiz study sets, but I also have all of my individual lessons for algebra broken up by lesson in order. So let's say I was going on and I wanted to do my solving equations with absolute value. And let's say that's the lesson that they just watched the video on. I had a quick conversation about it with them. I would pull up this study set, which has kind of two positives to it. Number one, I could do gu direct guided practice with my students, but also then it reminds my students that this study set exists that after our class period is over, students can easily access this study set and practice as much as they possibly could need. So what ends up happening here is I pull up the study set for the lesson that we just did. And usually I don't do flashcards. I think that they don't really work the best for math unless it's kind of like a yes, no answer or it's something that students would get really quickly. Learn is my absolute favorite when I'm doing any kind of guided practice with my students virtually. So what I usually do is I pull up the Quizlet study set and I click on learn. And anytime I click on learn in a Quizlet study set, I always go ahead and I go to my options. Now you can see this study set is actually, you know, ha almost half done from a previous class that I used this study set with. But what I usually do is I go into a study set, I click on options. I always make sure I'm answering with the term and I always uncheck flashcards and written questions. I really like for it just to be multiple choice. For these math problems and if you are a math teacher who is using Quizlet, typing questions, the answers in rather for written questions isn't always the best solution because there could be spacing issues, you could have something kind of a little wacky with the way you type something in and if the student types it in slightly different, it's wrong. 
Written is really, really good, in my opinion, for more vocabulary-based items. I also take away flashcards, so I usually just love to leave it as multiple choice. And since I use the same study set with each one of my classes during remote learning, and I'm going to do the same thing with hybrid, the reset progress um, option is fantastic for me because then I can just click, click start over. And you saw I had already completed 12 problems. If I click start over, it's going to reset all of my information, which is fine. This is my teacher account. It doesn't do anything to my student accounts. And I'm going to restart learn. And so you could see the 12 that were in known well, now went over to here in my remaining, and I have 27 problems to do. Now, also something that happens is when you're doing learn and you adjust the options, where let's say it's just multiple choice like I'm doing here, any question we get right will go directly from remaining to known well. If I had kept the other options open like flashcards and written questions, the moment I get a question right once, it will go over into familiar. And then that question will pop up again eventually but it will be in another form. So that same question that we might have answered as multiple choice will pop up again as, let's say, a type written question. And when I get it right for the second time, it goes into known well. So that's not going to affect us because, again, we are going to have a problem where it is just solely you get it right and it goes directly into known well, which is what I would personally prefer. OK, so I would pull up this problem and it says write the absolute value equation that has a solution of negative 10 and negative 6. So what I'm going to show you is that I would go ahead and depending on what computer you're using, you may have um, an option to write directly on your screen, which is what I'm going to use here. So write the absolute value equation that has a solution of negative 10 and negative 6. So I would basically just write exactly what my steps were that I taught my students. First, we calculate the midpoint. So we have to find the average of these two values. So negative 16 over 2 is negative 8. And I would basically be hosting my live chat with my students as I am going through and I am doing the work and I'm discussing each step of the way um, for this problem. So then once that point is done, and then I'm able to get my answer here for my midpoint and my distance, then I would be able to go ahead and write my equation. And again, I would be talking my students through this entire time on exactly how to do this problem. And again, having it already done in Quizlet is a very, very big help because then students can always repractice this problem. So then I would go through all of the steps and explain it to my students. I would then just kind of circle the answer to show them that the answer was there and we would go through. Okay, so then I would click on the answer and then we, it would just automatically bring us to the next problem. So then I would end up doing the same thing. This is solving an equation and I think you get the point. I would screenshot my screen. I would write all over it. If you have the capabilities, obviously not to have to do the screenshot and you can just direct, write directly on your screen and that's excellent. We would go through the problems. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and click on a wrong answer just to show you what happens. If we end up getting a wrong answer, it'll tell us what we said, 0, 4. It'll tell us what the correct answer is. Now, let's say I go through the screen and, you know, I ask my students to do the problem on their own. And I say, hey, I'm going to take whatever you say as an answer. This would kind of show, hey, we are wrong. It'll show what the correct answer is and then I can review it. Something else that help, has also been helpful is if I have a problem on the screen and I want the students to do the work on their own and then let me know as a class what they think the correct answer is, sometimes it could be overwhelming to have, you know, 30 students all shouting out negative one, one, negative six, four, four, negative four, five, negative three. And you have all this mix of numbers and it's hard to keep track of, wait, what answer do you guys all think it should be? So remember in learn, each answer choice is already numbered. So it's numbered as one, two, three, and four. And so, you know, if I say, hey guys, solve this on a dry erase board at home, go ahead, um, solve this on a piece of scrap paper at home, and then call out the number you think it is. And then most kids end up saying three, then that's the easier way. It's just saying, hey, say one, two, or three, three or four for your answer. And if they call out three, then it's a little easier to keep track of it. So then at that point, I might say to my students, you know what? I want you to do some independent practice right now. 
go ahead, log into your Quizlet account, access this study set. I'll drop the link into our video chat if they need it, and they can practice for as long as they need. The other awesome option is to do some Quizlet live sessions. When you have a teacher account, you have the option for live here. And what has been really good about Quizlet Live in my class is the option to do individual. I cannot stress to you how great having this individual option has been. The individual option for Live only came out in the spring of 2020 when we were all home and I could not be more thankful for it. For during remote learning, I did try out Teams and students were grouped into Teams and I didn't put them into any breakout rooms. Um, in our Microsoft Teams, you know, live video chat. I just wanted them to kind of answer it if they had the answer on their screen and then leave it alone if they didn't. And it didn't really work out so well because my students don't even know each other yet. We haven't met in person. So individuals was really the way to go. All the students get assigned their own name uh, of their team. So sharks, you know, uh, llamas, whatever it could possibly be, and then everyone is able to track their own name as they go across the screen and they get their answers right. So I would strongly suggest if you're looking for group practice and group play, but you want every student to be in charge of their own learning, then individuals is definitely the way to go. So between pre-recorded videos, having some live chats with my students, using Quizlet's learn feature to give my guided practice, plus sending them along and having them practice on their own, which I always do suggest guys when they practice on their own to do learn and make it multiple choice or test mode. Those are definitely my two go-tos for remote learning for sure. And then sometimes to wrap up a class period, we might do some Quizlet Live. And again, my recommendation is definitely individuals. Sometimes we go on to another activity for math, but otherwise that, that covers my 70 minute block pretty well. And I hope that when I go into hybrid in a couple of weeks, everything's able to go as smoothly as it's been going right now. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful for you. Bye.